What's up everybody and good morning my name is Corey and welcome back to the channel. So as you know last night or you may know hopefully last night I put up a video showing me making some cold brew coffee. What have I done since then? Well as I said I was going to do I went ahead and started the mead with said coffee. Um, so we're going to go ahead and walk you through the steps of how we are going to start this mead. This is really the I wouldn't even, well, I guess you could call it the most important part, the most pivotal part of making mead. And this is going to be actually getting it all together, mixed up, and uh, so essentially getting it all bottled up, mixed, get the yeast in there, and then just letting it sit. Um, what we really have to do after all this stuff is quite literally just let it sit for a couple months and then it'll be drinkable. I mean, no, technically you could go out there and drink it right now, but I wouldn't suggest it. It wouldn't do anything. It would just be very, very, very sweet coffee. They would probably give you an upset stomach because there's live yeast in it. <laughs> but um, what we're doing here is, as I said, we're going to start out with an empty one gallon carboy and fill it up with, not fill it up, but put two pounds, 12 ounces, which comes out to 2.75 pounds of honey. Um, there is going to be a very, very small amount more just because that's how it happens sometimes. After we get the 2.12, 2 pounds, 12 ounces of honey in this jar, then we're going to start actually filtering out the coffee. Uh, so next step in this process is taking the coffee itself, pouring it into my little French press here, and then just filtering it. The reason that we're doing this instead of just using grounded, like the the unfiltered uh, raw coffee with the ground still in it, is because if you continue to leave the coffee grounds in the coffee, it is going to continue to make it stronger and stronger and more aggressive, more, much more aggressive of a coffee flavor. It will come out potentially with an extremely harsh flavoring. So what I have elected to do is just use this overnight brew. It's kind of a cold brew, but I didn't brew it in the fridge. Once again, I just let it sit on the counter overnight for about 12, between 12 and 15 hours. I don't know exactly how long it sat out, but anywhere between 12 and 15 hours will suffice. Then, as you can see, we're filtering it. We're going to continue to filter out the coffee step by step, day by day, living my life in my kind of way, um, and then filling it up into here. Now, the difficult part, I wouldn't even really say difficult, but the, uh, the challenging part in all of this comes right about here. Because after you get all the coffee and all the, the honey in there, then you have to mix now, before we actually start mixing, I'm taking a packet of Lalvin 7-1-B yeast, and I'm pouring roughly half. Um, you don't have to be exact on here. If you do want to be exact, these things of yeast come with about, uh, I think it's what, four teaspoons of yeast. So you can use, or maybe it's that they come with two teaspoons and you can use one teaspoon I've measured it before, I just happen to not remember it right now. Um, but just pour roughly half into a little bit of purified water. For this, you can use just straight up purified water um, if that's all that you have, or distilled water. The nutrients and stuff in this small amount of water to go into the mead to hydrate the yeast doesn't make a difference. Just, again, don't use tap water to hydrate your yeast, in my opinion. Um, it's likely that there is a fluoride or a, uh, a chemicals that will not make it that great for yeast production, um, for yeast to do their job. This part is uh, very challenging. Um, I wouldn't even really say challenging. It's, it's, a, it's a workout though. Um, once you get the mead, the musk kind of all together but not mixed you do have to mix it does take a while of mixing you want to make sure that there's a lot of aeration going on within the mead uh, or the musk rather because the more you get this mixed up properly the more oxygenated and aerated you actually get the musk the better that the yeast will actually process everything um 
it, it's not like you have to do some crazy far-fetched thing there's people that use like power tools to mix their must I, if you're doing anything larger than a gallon, I can completely understand that. But if you're like me and you're just doing mostly gallon size meads, there's absolutely no purpose to run a fucking aeration machine or a power drill or anything like that. Just grab the damn thing and shake it. Like, you can use your muscles for, you know, a minute every couple weeks, okay? So we get it all mixed up the best that we can. It, in my opinion, I'm trying to, to show it to the camera, but you can't see too well because I wasn't exactly sure where the camera was uh, looking. Um, but you can see it, it seems as though all of the honey has been mixed in properly with the coffee. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking the original gravity. Now the reason that you check the original gravity is in these is uh, it's actually a multi-part thing. So one of the reasons that you want to check the original gravity, which is the the gravity of the alcohol or the gravity of the liquid um, before any type of fermentation has taken place. And that is so that you can tell the alcohol content of the final product as well as keep track of when it should be done. Now, there's different ways that you can tell when your meat is done. One of the ways that you can kind of tell, but is very inaccurate, is if your airlock is still bubbling. If the airlock is not bubbling, it is possible that the mead's done. It's also possible that it's just very, very slowly producing more carbon dioxide, or that it's even potentially stalled for a short amount of time. With doing this, with knowing the gravity um, and knowing the yeast that you use, you can kind of get a rough estimate as to what your final mead will be. So I know that this one, with what my original gravity is and with the amount of, uh, or the type of yeast that I used, this should come out as a moderately sweet, um, which I did that on purpose, a moderately sweet final product. Uh, and it should come out at around 14%, probably a little bit more. Um, so when, when you're checking the final gravity of your mead, which I'll be doing a, a bunch more examples, explanations, things of that nature in the future. When you're checking the final gravities of your mead, one of the smart things to do, or I wouldn't even say smart things to do, what I would suggest doing is when you think it's done, check the gravity, write it down, give it a week, check the gravity again. If it's changed, give it another week, check the gravity again. If it's changed again, then you're, you're probably just needing to let it continue to sit for a while. If you check it and the gravity is the same or within, you know, very, very close, and you, you check it, you know, a third time and it's still very, very close or the exact same, then I would say it's pretty much done. It's about done. Um, there are different things that you could use, different chemicals that you could use to basically stop the mead when you want it to be stopped. I personally... I have used them, and I'm not necessarily opposed to them, although I prefer when I do my meads just for it to be as natural of a process as possible, which means I like to use my, um, I like to use the, the yeast, the honey, and either fruits, or in this case, coffee, um, and spring water. The reason that I like to do that is because I know exactly what's going in my mead and I'm able to pronounce everything that's going in my mead and I'm able to go out into the wild and acquire everything that's in my mead. There's nothing that I put in my mead that you would not be able to just go out into the wild and acquire, um, which is very important to me. Uh, it's important to me probably because I'm an Oregonian and I'm a Viking at heart and also in heritage ancestry 
And it's just one of those things that I think if you're going to do it, it should be as natural of a process as possible. I do the same thing um, with cooking. I, I don't like to use cooking sprays. I don't like to use anything weird or out of the ordinary or crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to give an update like I said I would. This is part two. Part two of the Krigler Coffee Mead. Krigler Coffee, right, right there. Um, and it's, I feel this is going to be a really, really good mead. Um, if I actually pull up the ABV calculator right now, I can give you roughly what this mead should come out to. So the original gravity of this mead, it started out at a 1.112. And if I bring it, actually, you know what? It should come out almost completely dry. Yeah, it'll be almost it'll be almost dry with a very, very, very small amount of sweetness in it. If all the honey is fermented out, it'll come out to a 14.7%. The Lalvin yeast that I use, the 71B, it's supposed to max out at 14%, but as most people understand, if you've used yeast before, if you've done brewing before, that's not necessarily true. You can't always follow the the max tolerance on the yeast. In fact, I have a blueberry lemon going right now that's at 15% that I use that Lalvin 71B. So it's not, it should have stopped at 14. It's making it more dry than I want it to, but that's fine. I'm not going to force it to stop. I'm going to continue to let it go until it's done doing what it's doing. And then we'll take it from there. You live, you learn, and you try to adapt. You try to fix the mistakes that you made and move on from there. So with all that being said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys are having a great day and trust me, uh, stick around, keep your, keep your ear close and uh, we'll have more videos like this coming out. I'm having a lot of fun producing these meads and I really, really, really enjoy um, sharing it with you guys, sharing the, the process with you guys. One of the biggest things for me with mead is trying to get more people aware of mead more people aware of just how simple it is to produce it now granted i know that my life goals it would be a lot easier and a lot better for me to be like this is the most complicated thing i've ever done in my life you should never even attempt it just so i can you know in the future make money off of not being of people not understanding how simple it is but the fact of the matter is is you can tell 100 million people your ideas and two people will attempt it is that statistically true Probably not, but whatever. It doesn't matter. 97% of st statistics are made up anyways. Uh, anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. As always, I'm out.